To most people, Alex Mercer is a few things. A killer, a monster, and a terrorist. You may think that Alex would protest these claims, but he does no such thing. Alex knows what he is. He knows what he has done. He is the sole cause of what has become one of the greatest disasters in human history. The reason New York City has been rotting and quarantined away from the rest of the world for 18 days. Now, Alex stands on top of a building overlooking the city alongside a mysterious figure known only as the Contact. The Contact ominously tells Alex that they have less than an hour, then asks what's next. Alex states that the last person responsible for all of this dies tonight. We then jump back 18 days, where Alex is seen deceased in a morgue. This morgue is housed inside the headquarters of Gentech, a cutting edge biotech company that specializes in genetic engineering. The two scientists beside Alex are just about to begin their autopsy when suddenly Alex jumps awake, unable to remember who he is or what has happened. The scientists begin to panic and escape outside, where they are met by an elite squad that are a part of Black Watch, a highly secretive special forces unit that's designed to combat biological warfare. These soldiers have practically no oversight and are trained to take no chances, or as they see it, no prisoners. When the scientists come into contact with Black Watch, they are executed on the spot due to their erratic state. Alex witnesses this happen, and in his attempt to escape, attracts Black Watch's attention. Taking no chances, the Black Watch soldiers open fire. However, at this moment, Alex realizes that he has an enhanced healing factor capable of healing him of practically any injury. With this realization, instincts kick in and Alex escapes the soldiers by effortlessly jumping over a wall. Afterwards, he's met by a Black Watch helicopter that continues to chase him throughout the city. During this chase, Alex learns of his other incredible abilities like super strength that allows him to lift and throw almost anything that's not tied down, super speed that allows him to not only jump higher and run faster, but also run on vertical surfaces, and finally, shape shifting, which allows him to retain the appearance, skills, and memories of anyone he kills and consumes. Upon learning of this ability by consuming a random Blackwatch soldier, Alex also learns the location of his sister Dana, who is also being hunted by Blackwatch. Wanting to save his sister and learn more about himself along with what has happened to him, Alex makes his way to her apartment where he saves her from a Blackwatch soldier. Afterwards, they meet up in a more secure location nearby where Dana explains that she has no idea what's happening. From her perspective, they hadn't talked for nearly half a decade until suddenly, about a month ago, Alex contacted her with an urgent request to gather information on Raymond McMullen, the director of research at Gentech. She still has no idea why or what Alex had gotten himself into. Wanting to continue this research to get some answers, Alex and Dana go to Dana's friend's apartment that Dana has turned into her own personal safe house while her friend is out of the country. Here, Dana explains that while she doesn't know why Alex wanted her to research Gentech, she does know that there's something sketchy going on, and that if it were to go public, it would be considered the story of the century. Alex wants to learn more about himself, so he asks about where he lives. Dana points him to his apartment, but warns him that the military is possibly there as well. Alex acknowledges the risk, then travels to his apartment. Here he finds evidence that he wasn't just some nobody, he had a nice place, was highly educated, and even had a girlfriend, or possibly a wife. But before he could do any extensive research, there was a sudden explosion that sent him hurtling towards the ground. It's here where Alex sees a group of Blackwatch soldiers leaving a nearby building. Wanting some answers, he chases after the men and consumes the highest ranked agent, where he gets fragments of memories of a greater conspiracy having something to do with a location in Idaho. But not being able to do much with these memories, Alex lies low while Dana does some more research into Gentech, Blackwatch, and the ensuing infection quickly spreading throughout the city. Meanwhile, at Blackwatch HQ, General Peter Randall meets with Captain Robert Cross to discuss necessary actions pertaining to the growing threat of the infection throughout the city. At first, Randall asks Cross about his men's capabilities, to which Cross explains that while capable, his men cannot simply contain the outbreak in a city this populated. Randall notes that he's no longer looking to contain the infection anymore. Instead, he has another goal. He wants Cross and his men to focus all their efforts on killing Alex Mercer. 
A few days later, Alex meets back up with Dana, who informs Alex that she's found someone in the Gentech database named Elizabeth Green, who she thinks is somehow connected to Alex's situation. Alex somehow recognizes her photo, but is still unsure about her significance. Dana notes that Elizabeth is being kept in a secure containment cell on the 51st floor of the Gentech building. Alex immediately heads to Gentech, disguising himself as a high-ranking officer, and enters floor 51. Here, he sees that the entirety of this floor has been rotting from the infection, all stemming from a single point, a containment cell housing Elizabeth Green. Desperately wanting answers, Alex enters the room, and upon making contact with Elizabeth, is violently knocked out of the cell. In his confused state, Alex witnesses as Elizabeth places her hand on his head, revealing mysterious images of herself, a small town in ruins, and New York that she seems to prophesize will have the same fate. She then places her hand on the wall and just by that simple action, breaks it into pieces, giving her a quick way out. But before she makes her exit, she releases a few infected hunters from their incubation to keep Alex and the military distracted. After being knocked out of the building by the hunters, Alex knows that if they were to roam free, it would be absolutely devastating for the city. Thinking fast, he consumes a soldier who has more information on a warehouse that the military uses to hold all kinds of explosives. Using this information, Alex eventually neutralizes and consumes the hunters, gaining the ability to use their claws for himself. With the hunters neutralized, Alex meets back up with Dana, who lets Alex know that she's found his ex-girlfriend, Karen Parker, and that if she's found her, the military isn't far behind, so Alex should do what he can to get her to safety. Alex goes to the location specified, and surely enough, Karen is the woman seen from his apartment. Karen is happy to see Alex, but tells him that with the infection overtaking this section of the city, it'll be nearly impossible for them to leave. However, Alex could kill two birds with one stone, kill the infected hive nearby, and get her to safety if he could possibly get possession of some sort of military vehicle. Without hesitation, Alex heads to the nearest military base and consumes their APC driver, granting him the knowledge and clearance to drive one himself, which he then uses to clear the infected and rescue Karen. It's here when Alex learns how Karen seems to know so much about the chaos going on in the city, it's because she used to work with him at Gentech. Wanting to help Alex, she does some research while Alex gets some rest. The next day, they meet once more and Karen explains that in her research, she found that the infection is coming from two different sources, evidenced by the two separate genetic markers she's been able to find in her collected samples. However, to further her research, she would need more genetic samples, which she tasks Alex with gathering. After gathering all that Karen needs, Alex meets up with Dana, who has some urgent news. Due to the quickly spreading infection, the military has dispatched a heavily fortified aircraft carrier called the Reagan to be in close proximity to Manhattan. Their intention is for it to house all important military supplies and personnel so they aren't at risk of the infection. With its arrival, Dana also noticed a huge spike in military activity throughout the city. More specifically, she noticed far more armored vehicles roaming the streets. While Dana is focused on that, Alex is more concerned about the fact that if all important military personnel are on that carrier, then that means McMullen, the director of research at Gentech, is closer than ever. Without hesitation, Alex immediately goes to the Blackwatch facility nearest to the carrier to get more information. However, instead of learning McMullen's location, he instead learns of a new technology that Gentech has provided the military called Viral Detectors. This technology takes both an aerial and stationary form, and can detect the very virus that gives Alex's powers by sampling trace amounts of it in the air. Given enough exposure, these detectors will alert the military if Alex is nearby, even if he appears to be someone else. But at this moment, Alex isn't worried about himself. Instead, he's worried about the fact that they're using these armored vehicles throughout the city to escort aerial viral detectors to find his safe house. Dana's safe house. Immediately, Alex gets to work with taking down the armored patrols and viral detectors before they can reach Dana. After he's done, he and Dana set their sights on finding McMullen once and for all. Meanwhile, over at Blackwatch HQ, Randall, Cross, and McMullen are all discussing Gentech's most recent breakthrough. 
McMullen states that using Alex's genetic samples, they've synthesized a pathogen that, if injected into Alex, would neutralize his powers. Randall then hands the injection to Cross, trusting that he would know what to do with it. Cross has some hesitation, but Randall doesn't allow him to voice his opinion and orders that he follows instructions. After Cross departs, Randall looks to McMullen and notes that Cross has always had a problem with seeing the bigger picture, and sets down a file about nuclear weapon protocols. It's now been just under a week since the infection began, and approximately 20% of the city has now been infected. This has prompted Dana and Alex to kick things into high gear and really get to the bottom of all this, but all of that means finding the man at the center, McMullen. From what Dana has seen in the news, she knows that Blackwatch has been constantly monitoring the infected hive buildings. Once clear of infection, a helicopter arrives to take samples. She has concluded that if McMullen were to arrive, it would most likely be at this point. Alex uses this information and sabotages viral detectors around the building, so McMullen arrives sooner. However, as McMullen is landing, he notices that something isn't quite right, and just as Alex is closer than ever to some answers, McMullen instructs his pilot to fall back. Following this failure, Alex meets back up with Karen, who seems to have not made much progress with her research. In fact, she says that this time around she would need even more genetic material, but this time from inside of a hive. Alex agrees to help once more, but before he leaves, she starts to get oddly apologetic, saying that she wishes this whole thing could have played out differently. Alex doesn't seem to think much of this and moves on to collecting more genetic material from inside of a hive building. As he is doing this, Captain Cross suddenly repels from the ceiling and begins to fight Alex. Upon questioning how Cross knew his location, Cross says that Alex should pick his friends more carefully. Alex immediately connects this with Karen's odd behavior and notes that after he takes Cross down, he'll go after Karen. Once the fight concludes, Cross tries to escape but is followed by Alex who wants some answers. Cross tells Alex that he has no idea what game he's playing, and then he renders Alex dazed and confused by saying just two words, Penn Station. In this opening, Cross injects Alex with the pathogen, the very same pathogen that Alex assisted in developing by helping Karen. With Alex seemingly neutralized, Cross calls for backup, but when he turns his back, Alex is nowhere to be found. With the pathogen inside of him, Alex is unable to access most of his offensive powers but still retains the more passive ones. Wanting to get to safety, he of course gets to Dana's safe house. There, she explains that McMullen has a colleague named Dr. Ragland, who, unlike McMullen, is a genuinely good guy and may help Alex find McMullen along with fix his current situation. She then says that she's also found something else, something bigger. In her research, she has found that there used to be a small town in Idaho called Hope. Keywords are used to. See, back in 1969, the town of Hope mysteriously disappeared off the map. The government said that it was because of some gun nut militia that took over the town and the feds had to take care of it. But what's weirder is that the supposedly only survivor was a young woman named Elizabeth Green, who hasn't aged a day since 1969. Directly after this revelation, Alex goes to find Dr. Ragland, who sends him on a few missions, all of which help him to eventually cure his body of the pathogen. With his powers back to normal, Alex returns to Dana's safe house, ready to help her uncover the rest of the truth. However, just then, a highly evolved hunter breaks through the wall and takes Dana. Alex attempts to chase it, but he does not succeed. For the next little while, Alex, assisted by Dr. Ragland, tracks down the so-called leader hunter until he is eventually able to consume it and find the location where Dana was taken. That location being a heavily fortified hive building that Blackwatch is currently preparing to take down. Alex helps in this endeavor and eventually blows a hole in the building which he then enters. Inside, he is yet again met by Elizabeth Green. However, this time, Alex gets the upper hand and is able to inject her with what looks to be the same pathogen that was injected into him. Elizabeth doesn't take too kindly to this and creates a very powerful Supreme Hunter to distract Alex while she gets away. Alex then takes this Supreme Hunter down, however, as he is escaping with Dana, the monster begins to regenerate. Fearing for her health and safety, Alex takes Dana to Dr. Ragland, trusting that he will keep her safe. Of course, Ragland is happy to help, and just before Alex leaves, 
Raglan hands him a mysterious map that he says just showed up recently. The map leads Alex to a phone booth on the southeast side of Manhattan, where he finds a burner phone that connects him to someone known only as the contact. Without explaining why, they reveal to Alex that in 1969, Black Watch were the ones to infect the town of Hope, Idaho with something that they called Red Light. At first, the infection remained dormant until it eventually found its perfect host in a woman named Elizabeth Green. Once she took control, the town was quickly overrun by the infection and the government had to take immediate action by wiping the town off the map completely. Afterwards, Gentech was given a sample of the red light virus that they dubbed Blacklight. Their goal with Blacklight was to create a virus that can combine multiple genetic traits to effectively rewrite genetic code instantaneously. This is what Alex was infected with, or rather, it's what he has become. See, Blacklight does not simply attach to a host, no, it consumes them. This means that Alex isn't really Alex Mercer, or at least not anymore. He's the Blacklight virus that just thinks it's Alex. The contact concludes the call by letting Alex know that virus or not, Blackwatch is planning to destroy the city and that Alex needs to stop it. Alex is then given a mysterious location where once at that location, he finds it pretty clear that he's supposed to consume and then take the place of a Blackwatch pilot. After blending in with the military, Alex takes part in a secret meeting where Blackwatch discusses a new bioweapon they've developed called Blood Tox. However, this weapon isn't made for humans. Instead, it's specifically designed to combat anyone who's infected with the Blacklight virus. They end the meeting by noting that they're currently planning to release Blood Talk citywide, but first, to demonstrate safety amongst healthy humans, they've also planned a test run in this very room. As the blood tox continuously fills the building, Alex must battle its effects as well as the near endless amount of Blackwatch soldiers attempting to take him down. Afterwards, Alex finds and puts an end to the citywide blood tox distribution, leaving only one facility where blood tox remains. However, Alex is told by the contact to not destroy this facility. Instead, he should use the blood tox to flush out Elizabeth, who is currently residing underneath Times Square. After taking the form of a Blackwatch officer, Alex commands the blood tox to be transported to Times Square, where he protects it against the hordes of infected while blood tox is pumped below ground. Eventually, Elizabeth is flushed out from below the surface, where she and Alex have one final battle to decide who's truly the perfect host. Unsurprisingly, Alex is victorious, and with that victory, he is able to consume Elizabeth. With the blood tox supply now severely crippled, every single Blackwatch soldier is given the order to retreat back to the Reagan. Alex notices this and assumes that the retreat order could only mean one thing. Now that the clock is quite literally ticking, Alex decides that he'll do what he must to finally get McMullen. The contact informs Alex that he can get to McMullen, but it will require him to take kind of a risky gamble. See, Alex has been increasingly exposed to blood tox, which due to his increased rate of mutation means that he has now built up a slight blood tox resistance. The plan is for Alex to use this resistance to his advantage by inhaling blood tox and playing dead until he is personally delivered to McMullen. With seemingly no other option, Alex decides to trust his new contact and goes through with the plan that, sure enough, delivers him right to McMullen. This final confrontation begins with McMullen instantly grabbing a gun as soon as he sees Alex. Like, a gun's gonna do anything. Alex lets McMullen know that he should start talking, because one way or another, he's gonna get the information he needs. McMullen tells Alex that he's always thought he was so smart. Smart enough that he wanted to give away all of their secrets about black light, red light, hope, all of it. Alex asks if that's why he was infected, because he just knew the truth. McMullen laughs, stating that he did not infect Alex. Alex did. He grabbed the virus on his own and used it as leverage so he couldn't be taken out for knowing the truth. That's what happened at Penn Station that day. Alex was going to tell the whole world the truth until Blackwatch caught up with him, killed him, and Alex released the virus, which then consumed him. But McMullen knows that that's not all Alex came here to learn. He wanted to know about Idaho. He wanted to learn the truth about Elizabeth. He wanted to know everything that he knows. McMullen then raises his gun and without hesitation, 
takes his own life, along with the answers Alex so desperately wants. So I guess the gun did do something after all. With McMullen out of the picture, Alex once again meets with the contact. However, this time it's a bit different, as right when Alex is expecting the call, Captain Cross reveals himself to be the contact. He tells Alex that Randall has ordered that all Blackwatch retreat back to the Reagan and confirms Alex's suspicion that he plans to nuke the island, meaning that the only safe location would be on the Reagan itself. Alex states that there's no way to make it to the Reagan even with his abilities. However, Cross disagrees, noting that he knows someone named Colonel Taggart that Randall wants taken into custody and brought aboard the Reagan. All he has to do is take Taggart's place and they can both be safe from the blast. It's now been just over two weeks since the infection began and the city has gone to complete hell. Of the people remaining, over half carry the infection and the rest are unaware that they're about to be turned into dust if Randall gets his way. But Alex won't let that happen. All he has to do is find Taggart, get on the Reagan, and find some way to stop the nuke. Soon enough, Cross contacts Alex informing him that Taggart is currently at a heavily fortified military base. Alex raids the base only for Taggart to escape in a tank headed for the Brooklyn Bridge. However, as the tank is about to leave Manhattan, Alex catches up to it and consumes Taggart. All of this means that we have finally caught up to Alex and Cross on the 18th day of the infection, right before they are about to infiltrate the Reagan. Cross asks Alex what's next, and Alex responds with, the last person responsible for all of this dies tonight. It's obvious now that Alex is referring to General Randall, the last person he has yet to get answers from. With that, Alex and Cross begin their infiltration, with Alex taking the form of Taggart and Cross taking him aboard as prisoner. Upon entering the carrier, Randall shows zero hesitation and instantly executes Taggart, effectively cutting off his final loose end. He then explains the necessity of the nuclear option to Cross, but before the nuke can be transported to Manhattan, Alex reveals himself to be Taggart, unarmed from the gunshot. Alex says that he won't let Randall nuke New York like he did Hope, and without thinking twice, consumes Randall. All of the pieces suddenly fall into place. Everything from Red Light to Elizabeth Green, Gentech to Black Light. It all makes sense. In the 1960s, during the height of the Civil Rights Movement, the government created a virus known as Red Light that was meant to be used to target specific races. In 1969, the government tested this virus in the town of Hope, Idaho, where it quickly got out of hand. Fearing the spread of the virus and the loss of his status, the then Lieutenant Randall was ordered to wipe the town off the map entirely. This plan was mostly a success, however, there was one survivor. Well, sorta. Elizabeth Green was unlike the rest. Her body somehow accepted the virus, and at the time, she was pregnant with a child known as Pariah. This child, along with Elizabeth, would be taken in by the government and studied by a brand new research organization called Gentech. Eventually, Gentech would hire a brilliant scientist named Alex Mercer. Mercer found Gentech's experiments on these so-called subjects to be wildly inhumane, and as he uncovered the truth about hope, he began to fear for his life. Taking the Blacklight virus as collateral, Alex made his way to Penn Station, where he was killed by Blackwatch and consumed by the virus. Immediately following these revelations, Cross suddenly grabs Alex, stating that once he consumes him, he will be strong enough to survive the nuke. He then throws Alex and morphs into the Supreme Hunter, who, once thought to be dead, had consumed Cross and took his place. Afterwards, there is a final showdown between the Supreme Hunter and Alex on the runway of the Reagan. All the while, the nuke is set to detonate in just a few short minutes. After a long and tenuous fight, Alex comes out on top and wasting no time, gets into a helicopter, latches onto the nuke, and flies as far out into the ocean as he can before dropping it. On his way back to the city, Alex sees a flash of light, followed quickly by an unavoidable shockwave that rips his body apart. Alex would have been content to die that day, but from just a single tiny piece of the virus and an unlucky bird, Alex is reborn. Not as a human, of course, but something else. Something more. The first of his kind. A.
Immediately following the decline of the blacklight virus, the citizens of New York focused all of their efforts on reviving their once great city. This would continue for about a year, until one day, the virus mysteriously returned. Wasting no time, the government would once again call upon Black Watch to stop the spread of what would become known as the Mercer virus. Black Watch would immediately erect a quarantine around Manhattan, but things would quickly escalate, and soon enough, the entirety of the island was nearly uninhabitable. In addition to this, the virus was continuing to creep its way outside of Manhattan and into the other boroughs. To distinguish their levels of safety, Blackwatch had renamed Manhattan the Red Zone and the other two boroughs the Yellow and Green Zone. Soon enough, it became clear that Blackwatch alone wasn't capable of containing or eradicating the virus. This situation called for some extra help in the form of the United States Marine Corps. With urgency, a troop of marines were deployed to the red zone. Among these men is a man named James Heller, who has a particular interest in one thing, Alex Mercer, who he blames for the death of his wife and daughter. As the troop is driven deeper into the red zone, a random car is thrown into their APC, killing nearly everyone in the impact. Everyone but Heller, who wakes just in time to see Alex Mercer make his grand appearance. With vengeance in mind and nothing left to lose, Heller attempts to attack Mercer, but even with his advanced combat skill, he's just no match. However, Mercer doesn't immediately put an end to the fight. In fact, he taunts Heller to follow him. As Heller chases after Mercer through the crumbling ruins of New York, he is attacked by a number of powerful infected creatures. Being barely fast enough to escape the infected, Heller is caught off guard when he sees Mercer once more. As he attempts to charge Mercer, he is pinned to the wall and stabbed by his claws. This act transfers Mercer's strain of the infection directly into Heller, allowing him to barely survive the attack. After Mercer leaves, a Blackwatch helicopter spots Heller's body and transports him to a Gentech laboratory in the Yellow Zone. Here, Heller is being experimented on by a man named Dr. Koenig, who is being shadowed by two Blackwatch higher-ups named Colonel Rooks and Lieutenant Riley. They immediately demand that Koenig dispose of Heller's body as it's too risky to conduct tests on. However, Koenig is not about to let this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity pass him by. He wants to know exactly what makes Heller so special. Heller is then released from captivity, where his strengths, weaknesses, and capabilities are all tested. This is when he learns of his abilities that are nearly identical to Mercer's. However, he is unique in that he has a highly durable form of the virus. As these tests quickly escalate, Heller eventually finds an opportunity to escape, where he is immediately met once again by Alex Mercer. Heller immediately questions what has happened to him, to which Mercer says that it wasn't an accident he was chosen, and it also wasn't an accident that this virus is named what it is. He then goes on to explain that this entire outbreak has simply been a way for Blackwatch and Gentech to exploit Mercer's infamy for their own experiments, a way for them to have total control, but none of the blame. This means that he isn't to blame for the death of Heller's family, Blackwatch is. Heller doesn't immediately believe Mercer, but his suspicions are suppressed when Mercer guides him through the process of consuming others for their memories. Afterwards, Mercer ends the conversation by saying that with Heller's help, they can both take down Blackwatch and Gentech together. After getting some well-deserved rest, Heller begins to walk the streets of the Yellow Zone, where he eventually stumbles upon his old church. Wondering how they are doing, Heller heads inside and meets with Father Guerrera, who explains that this entire time, he's done his best to keep hope alive, but Blackwatch is absolutely ruthless. This, along with what Mercer said, pushes Heller to conclude that his purpose with his newly found power is to put an end to Blackwatch and Gentech for good. He does so by pursuing the two people he knows are definitely involved those being Dr. Koenig, the scientist who experimented on him, and Colonel Rooks, the Blackwatch soldier overseeing Koenig. After pursuing some leads, Heller finds himself in front of a brutal experiment that has Blackwatch releasing an infected brawler into an enclosed park to learn more about their behavior. Heller puts a stop to this experiment, and upon consuming the brawler, is granted their claws to use for himself. He then meets back up with Father Guerrera, who, after hearing about the experiments, decides it's time that he takes matters into his own hands once more. He then leads Heller down into his secret room in the church's basement. 
Here, he explains that he and other people used to use this room as a way to spread information and fight back against Blackwatch's tyranny during the first infection. But now, in addition to that, he's going to use it to help Heller take Blackwatch down for good. Following this, Father Guerrera helps Heller track down and infiltrate a Gentech facility where he finds the location of a secret Blackwatch meeting being held by Colonel Rooks in a nearby Blackwatch base. Before the meeting, Heller takes the form of a Blackwatch soldier, which along with giving him access to the meeting, also gives him access to certain Blackwatch communications from now on. Heller soon arrives at the meeting, but unfortunately for him, it's not a very long one, as all the men are simply ordered to go do a field test nearby. Upon arriving at the field test, Heller sees how the civilians involved are being treated and puts an immediate stop to it. Afterwards, Heller intercepts Blackwatch communications and learns that a scientist named Dr. Sheffield is trying to escape the Yellow Zone. Heller uses this information to eventually track down and consume him, and this is when he learns that all the previous research he saw being conducted were all part of a larger plan, simply called Phase 1. Following this, Colonel Rooks contacts Heller, who he thinks is a Blackwatch soldier, and orders him to go to a Gentech research post. Once he arrives, Heller sees that they have captured and are conducting experiments on a Hydra. As Heller's proximity to the Hydra shrinks, the creature begins to get irritated and eventually breaks out of its confines. Heller quickly puts it down and at the same time, takes its power. Afterwards, he intercepts a conversation between two Gentech scientists on his Blackwatch radio. In this conversation, they discuss that while the death of the Hydra was unplanned, they had fortunately gotten all they needed from it and are now ready to move on to Phase 2. Following the conversation, Father Guerrero informs Heller that he has re-established contact with an old colleague of his named Athena who resides in the Red Zone. They had informed Guerrero of a test site that Blackwatch controls that sees a lot of civilian traffic going in, but not much going out. Heller agrees to handle it and makes quick work of clearing out the entire base. Unfortunately, the feeling of accomplishment is quickly overshadowed by a single phone call, in which Father Guerrera states that Blackwatch has found his location. Heller doesn't hesitate to get back to the church, where he eventually destroys multiple convoys of armored vehicles, all working to burn the church to the ground. After Heller makes sure Father Guerrera is alright, Guerrera says that for his own safety, he's chosen to move back to the green zone, though he's still going to continue to help Heller remotely. But on a lighter note, he says that with Athena's help, he's found the location of Dr. Koenig's lab, which Heller immediately infiltrates. Upon entering Koenig's office, Heller transforms from a Blackwatch soldier into himself. However, to Heller's surprise, Koenig is absolutely unfazed by this. He then begins to frantically ramble about how he's glad Heller is safe and that he's being forced to work for Blackwatch against his will. Heller sees straight through this seemingly desperate attempt to spare his own life, but continues to let him speak. He does so, and reveals the big project Gentech has been working on is actually a super soldier program called Project Orion. The conversation concludes with Dr. Koenig pointing Heller towards Dr. Burke, the head of Project Orion. This leads him to a Gentech facility, where Heller comes into contact with some first generation super soldiers, which he takes out along with the facility. This prompts a Blackwatch soldier to radio Dr. Burke, who reveals in their conversation that they still have one remaining next generation Project Orion sample held at a stadium nicknamed the Proving Grounds. Heller immediately travels to the Proving Grounds, where he takes out the remaining super soldiers and eventually consumes Dr. Burke. In doing so, he learns that his initial suspicions were correct. Dr. Koenig was playing dumb to mislead Heller so he could eventually take him down. The only question now is why? Why inform him about Project Orion? Why hurt his own allies and destroy precious research just to take down Heller? The truth is soon learned, once Heller rampages through the Yellow Zone, destroying countless Blackwatch vehicles along with the helicopter belonging to Dr. Koenig. This opens the opportunity for Heller to consume Koenig, which he immediately tries. However, in this moment, it's revealed that Heller wasn't the only one who Mercer shared his powers with. As Dr. Koenig reveals his disdain, the Heller was chosen as well. This is why he was so content on conducting experiments on Heller. He wanted to know what made him so special, but a different kind of special. 
he wanted to know why Mercer chose him. This launches them into a grueling fight that eventually concludes with Heller consuming Dr. Koenig. This is when he learns that Koenig was just a single piece of Mercer's mysterious plan in the Green Zone, and that there are more of these so-called evolved throughout the city. Following the memory dump, Heller is confronted by Alex Mercer once more. Mercer states that Heller has greatly overstepped his bounds by killing one of his evolved, especially someone as crucial to the plan as Dr. Koenig. Heller says that he should have known that there were more of them running around and asks why. Mercer reveals to Heller that his plan to take down Blackwatch and Gentech is to break them from the inside out. This has resulted in him creating dozens of evolved, all tasked with infiltrating every step of their corporate ladders. The confrontation ends with Heller pointing out that Mercer had never once mentioned taking out the virus, which he had assumed was Mercer's reason for taking out Blackwatch and Gentech. Mercer avoids this statement and simply says that Heller needs to trust him and stay out of his way. After Mercer leaves, Heller calls Father Guerrera and tells him about the confrontation, and while Guerrera is surprised, he also says that Heller doesn't know the half of it. With that, Heller makes his way to the Green Zone to meet up with Father Guerrera so he can be told this seemingly crucial information in person. Father Guerrera begins by saying that what Heller is about to see comes from Athena's research. He then shows Heller a map of New York during the Blacklight virus and continues to say that about 15 months ago, the first virus started in Penn Station. Then, a year later, the virus somehow magically appeared again, and he'll never guess where it started. Penn Station. To prove these claims, Guerrero shows Heller a video that reveals Alex Mercer spreading the infection once more, however this time, it's completely intentional. Heller's mind begins to race, as this means that Mercer really was the one who killed his family. Guerrera stops Heller from spiraling any further by noting that if Mercer really does have dozens of evolved, then Heller is going to have to track them down. He begins by focusing on a woman named Sabrina Galloway, who he briefly remembers from Koenig's memory dump. After Heller leaves to find Sabrina, he is eventually able to infiltrate a blacklight security briefing held by Lt. Riley. Riley discusses that their primary objective given to them from higher ups is to keep James Heller and his accomplice Father Guerrera away from Sabrina Galloway. Unfortunately for them, it's at this very meeting where Heller gets her location and does just that. Upon making contact with Sabrina, she immediately informs Heller that she is not his enemy. She says that unlike the others, she doesn't blindly follow Alex Mercer, which is also something that she admires about him. She also states that she has the ability to track other evolved, well, all except Heller and another man named Roland, Mercer's number one informant. Seeing as it's in both their interests to take Roland out, Sabrina suggests an alliance between the two of them, which Heller cautiously accepts. For the next few missions, Heller narrows down Roland's location until he eventually corners him at an infected lair. This results in a fight where after consuming Roland, Heller learns of a substance called white light that Mercer has some sort of investment in. He then contacts Guerrera, who says that according to Athena, white light is a substance that Gentech created that is rumored to actually be a cure for the virus. Sensing that something bigger is going on, Guerrera sends Heller to investigate a man named Commander Gallagher, who is supposedly the head of the project. Heller does so, and after quickly tracking him down, he finds he is yet again another one of Mercer's evolved. This reinforces his suspicion that white light is not at all what it seems. After this, Father Guerrera informs Heller that Colonel Rooks and Lieutenant Riley are planning to move Dr. Koenig's team over to the Green Zone. Additionally, Koenig is being replaced by someone named Dr. Archer, who he suspects is another one of Mercer's puppets. Heller goes to take out Koenig's team to learn more, but afterwards is sidetracked when he decides that it would be ultimately beneficial if he were able to masquerade as Lieutenant Riley. This task has him search the green zone for Riley's tank, where after consuming him, Heller learns that Riley and Rooks weren't so ignorant after all. In fact, before Koenig died, they had strong suspicions that he was tampering with the white light. Following this realization, Heller fully commits himself to figuring out what white light is and why Mercer wants it. Using Riley's identity, Heller gets information about a man named Dr. Gutierrez, who is a part of Dr. Archer's team and most likely one of Mercer's evolved. Heller then quickly hunts him down, learns he is indeed one of the evolved, consumes him, and learns the truth. 
white light isn't a cure at all. In fact, it's the opposite, as Koenig and Archer have been injecting every single supply with Mercer's DNA. The only question now is, what does it do? Conveniently, around this same time, Rooks reveals that Dr. Archer has fortified herself in the main white light manufacturing facility. Heller finds this facility, confronts Dr. Archer, and after a lengthy fight, learns the unfortunate truth that Dr. Archer and Koenig had already contaminated every last drop of white light and that Blackwatch are planning to release it citywide, seeing as they still think it's a cure. Following this, Athena informs Guerrera of a shipment of white light stationed in the green zone, which Heller investigates. This is when he gets the bright idea to morph into a Blackwatch officer and command a scientist to release a small dose of white light into the surrounding air so he can just test what it does firsthand. Unsurprisingly, he finds that when someone comes into contact with white light, they turn into an evolve. After dealing with the infected soldiers, Heller travels to a white light storage depot to destroy it, but before he can do so, he is confronted by Alex Mercer. He says that Heller has disappointed him, wasted his white light, and ruined his plans. He then grabs Heller and attempts to consume him, however, through sheer willpower, Heller is able to resist and even damage Mercer in the process. This causes Mercer to retreat, but not before releasing an infected Goliath to distract Heller. After the Goliath is killed, Heller is called by Father Guerrera, who once more is in distress. Heller tells him to hold on and rushes to his location, but on arrival, it's clear that he was too late. As he is mourning his loss, the phone in Father Guerrero's pocket begins to ring. Heller answers, and the woman on the other end recognizes that Heller answering means that something has gone terribly wrong. Heller then politely asks for her name, and she says that Father Guerrero knew her as Athena, his contact in the red zone, but that her real name is Dana Mercer, and she has important information about Heller's daughter. Upon hearing of his daughter, Heller immediately jumps to his feet, ready to go. But before he heads off to the chaos of the red zone, he takes these rare moments of silence to mourn Father Guerrera for the final time. After traveling to the apocalyptic hellscape that is the red zone, Heller meets up with Dana, who says that while she doesn't know much about Heller's daughter, she does know that she is alive in the red zone. She then begins to talk about Alex, but Heller doesn't want to hear any of it. All he cares about now is saving his daughter. As he is storming out, he is stopped by Dana, who says that if the city goes to shit, then finding Amaya isn't going to matter either way. What he needs is to focus on stopping Blackwatch and Alex while she can look for Amaya herself. Heller thinks about the situation and reluctantly agrees. Afterwards, his first step is to, ironically, help Blackwatch to destroy the remaining white light that they have been attempting to incinerate. After doing so, Sabrina contacts Heller, informing him of a massive Blackwatch operation that could mean the end of the city. Heller investigates and finds her statements to be true. Blackwatch has a project codenamed Firehawk that is indeed meant to completely level the city. Their plan is to equip an entire fleet of helicopters with thermobaric missiles, which would then sweep the city, leaving nothing behind. But of course, Heller puts an end to this by hijacking one of the helicopters and taking out the rest of the fleet. Afterwards, Heller meets back up with Sabrina, who says that they work well together and proposes the idea that they leave all of this behind, and together, move as far away from all of this as they can. Obviously, Heller rejects this proposal, which leaves Sabrina feeling betrayed, but Heller doesn't pay any attention to this, as he only has one thing on his mind, getting his daughter back. Following this, Colonel Rooks contacts Heller under the assumption that he's Lieutenant Riley. He says that he's found a lead on something that could help them catch Heller. Apparently, Heller has a daughter who's being held in custody by a federal agent named Griffin. Heller quickly ends the conversation and mercilessly pursues Griffin, killing absolutely everyone in his path, but in the end, he's no closer to finding Amaya. In this moment, Heller is at his absolute lowest, and with no clear path forward, he has a bit of a change in perspective. He realizes that this whole time, he has been mercilessly killing absolutely everybody in his path to either get revenge or save his daughter, but now he questions if he did save his daughter, would he even be worthy of her love? Could she look at him the same, knowing that he's an unapologetic murderer? This prompts him to have a meeting with Dana and ask her if she would be willing to take care of Amaya 
once she is saved. Dana is shocked that Heller would ask her to do something like this, but after hearing the desperation in his voice, she agrees. Following this, Heller focuses on finding Rooks' location to gain as much information as possible on Amaya, and upon eventually arriving at his office, Heller slowly sneaks up behind him while he's on the phone. Once close enough, Heller goes in for the killing blow, but stops mid-attack when he hears that Rooks has a daughter as well. In this moment of hesitation, Heller realizes that in pawning off his responsibility to Dana, he had given himself an excuse to continue to be a monster, someone who kills without thinking of how his actions affect people like Rooks' daughter. Heller lowers his hand, and in the last second before he can be noticed by Rooks, morphs into Lieutenant Riley. Rooks is surprised by Riley's sudden appearance and questions why he's there. Riley says that he's going to go after someone named Dr. Carson, a scientist that Griffin used to work with to try to find Amaya before Heller. He then quickly leaves, but not without making Rooks suspicious of the interaction. Afterwards, Heller quickly infiltrates a military base and consumes Dr. Carson. This reveals that not only was Mercer involved with Amaya's kidnapping, but that he also has other plans for her because she and Heller share the same resistant DNA. Directly following this memory dump, Rooks contacts Riley, saying that he has found important information about Amaya and they should meet up. However, when Heller arrives, Rooks holds him at gunpoint and accuses him of being some sort of double agent. This is when Heller reveals himself to be Riley and explains that all he cares about is saving his daughter, so if Rooks doesn't want to die, then he should stay out of his way. Afterwards, Heller goes back to talk to Dana, hoping that she had found anything on Amaya, but unfortunately, she has nothing. But just when all hope seems lost, Rooks contacts Heller to show him that he has found Amaya, and that if he wants her, he can come get her at Gentech HQ. Heller wastes no time getting to Gentech and breaking through the nearly impenetrable steel door barricading the entrance. Upon entering the building, Heller is confronted by Rooks and two other Blackwatch guards. Heller begins to explain that again, he's just here for his daughter, but before he can finish, Rooks shoots the other two guards and coldly tells Heller to get his daughter, then get the hell out of his city. When Heller eventually makes it to the heart of the building, he sees that Amaya is alive. However, she's being held hostage by Sabrina, who says that Heller should have taken her deal. She then quickly escapes the building, taking Amaya with her. Heller chases after her until he is eventually confronted by a group of Evolved, led by Alex Mercer. Heller immediately demands to know where Amaya is, saying that he'll find her one way or another. Mercer states that Heller is simple-minded, still thinking like a human. He can't see the bigger picture. Mercer continues to say that he's trying to unite humanity, create a bigger, perfect world without conflict, disease, or suffering. A world where everyone is connected through one giant hive mind. Heller says that he's sick of the weird, rambling shit and demands to know Amaya's location for the final time. Mercer tells Heller not to worry, that Amaya is part of the plan as well. Seeing as how they share the same resistant DNA, it would be stupid not to use her. He assures Heller that once she is ready, Amaya will become greater than ever, as she will be the mother of the new world. But now, the only thing standing between him and that goal is Heller himself. Without hesitation, Mercer raises his arms and consumes every last evolved around him, including Sabrina, before directing his focus to James Heller. As their fight ensues, Mercer's initial overconfidence quickly fades, but it's not until the very end, when he is left broken and helpless, that he accepts his fate. Upon consuming Alex Mercer and becoming the most powerful person in the world, James Heller instantly, without a second of hesitation, uses his newfound power to cleanse the city of infection. Once that's out of the way, he goes to find his daughter, who is safe from harm thanks to Dana but also scared of what her father has become. As the sun begins to rise, a brighter future comes into view for the millions of lives that Alex Mercer ruined. But for Heller, his world would always be dark without his daughter. Luckily, all she needed was some time to realize what her dad had truly done for her, or maybe more importantly, what he didn't do for her. Because while Alex Mercer thought that he could save the world by ending humanity, 
James Heller proved that he could save his by embracing it.